And I think it's fantastic that they're here kicking off the parade because even though this parade has become such a formal affair, it's really the military that has been a part of it from the first time that the inauguration parade took place here in Washington, D.C. in 1801 with Thomas Jefferson. It was a very spontaneous affair, though, a company of riflemen. It got a little more... All right, hold on, guys, hold on. It looks like the, it looks like the presidential limo has just stopped. I suspect we are about to see the president and the first lady getting out of that limo. Let's just watch and listen for a second as we see what happens. By members of the United States Armed Forces to be sworn in as the first president. And Alec, if I go, okay. It's getting, it's getting hard to hear you down here because the cheers are so loud, but Wolf and everybody you can see just behind me, just behind that limo, is the president of the United States and Michelle Obama walking uh, down Pennsylvania Avenue, waving to the crowd on both sides of the street. Uh, the president uh, and the first lady don't look very cold. It's, it's not that cold today uh, for our viewers who are wondering. You know, is it as cold as some inaugurals could be? No, it's not. It, this is actually pretty balmy for January. And obviously, this is, uh, this is the moment that everybody is waiting for on Inauguration Day when the President and the First Lady step out of their limo and walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, you know, it, I, I, feel, I feel like I should pitch myself right now, Wolf. I can't believe I have this, uh, this vantage point of history in the making. So you're literally, what, about 15, 20 feet away from the President? I'm, I'm probably a good... I would say 50 feet away from the president right now, Wolf, oh, uh, but very, that. very close. And you can see the Secret Service agents all around him. There's a, there's a steady cam next to him as well. I guess those are folks getting some really close shots. Their, their vantage point slightly better than ours, Wolf. Uh, that's the pool camera right there. But uh, what we're all doing right now, you know, the, where we are standing and, and other uh, folks with the national news media, they're on the backs of these trucks. We're all doing this sort of dance right now. and. We just got lucky enough, Wolf, to be in position where our truck was right in front of the president and First Lady as they're walking down Pennsylvania Avenue. So get, just the luck of the draw, but it worked out pretty well. Uh, but uh, as you can see, every time he passes, another block of people lined up along the street. The cheers just go up on both sides of Pennsylvania Avenue. And every once in a while, I feel like I have to look back and, and see it for myself, Wolf, um, trying to take some pictures along the way. Something for the kids at home. You're taking pictures. I assume you're tweeting some of those pictures at Jim Acosta CNN. Is that right? Is that your Twitter handle? Wolf. Oh, I, I don't know if you it, can hear me. But, but, but you know what? He's very excited. We're all very excited to see what's going on. But you know, Kate, Jeffrey, we may be excited, but the folks who have been waiting for hours, hours. on both sides of that street they are seeing history right now, and they are thrilled. Some of our correspondents that are on, that have been on the parade route have said people have been there since 2.30 in the morning to try to get a good position. I mean, this is what all of these folks are waiting for. And I think as we were watching, as they're getting out of the car, you could see people rushing to try to get to the very spot just to get a glimpse of them. Yep. I mean, this is history in the making. This is These are these images that we look back at years and years later. Aaron Burnett is out there on Pennsylvania Avenue as well. He's making his way closer and closer, Aaron, towards you, together with the First Lady. You're there with a special guest. Yes, uh, we are, and we're all hoping that he will stay out uh, long enough to get here. Obviously, the entire crowd is as well. Joe Z joins us. He's the creative director at Elle magazine. And Joe, I want to talk to you right now because we're looking at, 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 at Michelle and Barack Obama. And I think the real tragedy of today is that she has to give that outfit away to the National Archive. I know. I think that coat and that dress is so beautiful on her. I mean, literally, it's custom made for her. And you can tell that it's literally been molded onto her body. I mean, she looks, it, it's absolutely beautiful. And of course, in her traditional style, uh, as she's which, uh, a very modern style, but um, she's put a J. Crew belt with a dress that would be, I mean, I know it's custom made, but a few thousand I mean, dollars. Oh, that Tom Brown coat, I think it'd be anywhere upwards of $3,000. I mean, it's made of a men's tie silk material, but it was right. custom done for her. So you couldn't even find it if you wanted to. One, only one exists, and right now it's on Mrs. Obama. And um, I'm just curious, you know, when I looked up Tom Brown today, I tried to learn about uh -huh. it. It was menswear. Yes, you know, he really men's started pants for that go wear. above the ankle, and, you know, I mean, yes. not a lot of short men want pants. to show their ankles. <laughs> short pants but, and short jackets are really his trademark. So she has made designers like Jason Wu, for example, mm -hmm. become uh, more of a household name in this country, something a lot of American women want to wear. 
a, a custom-made dress from a guy that's not known for women's wear. Will it will it transform his career? Will people start wearing it? Well, I mean, this? right away this morning, you could tell he was a trending topic immediately on Twitter. You know, he's the buzz on everybody's lips. And I think the thing is, it does translate to buzz. Does it translate to business? I think it's tougher when it comes to luxury brands like Tom Brown. And right. what did you think as well about the coordination sort of a, of the family? It's oh, a family affair today. It is. I mean, I have to tell you, their daughters are like mini me's of Michelle. And they're gorgeous. I mean, they're gorgeous, all of them. I mean, they're so color coordinated down to yeah. the final color. All right. We want to listen to the crowds cheering here as uh, the president and the first lady are walking for just a moment so you can all sort of feel you're a part of this at home. Here that is. And uh, the president is now just about just about a block away from where we are here on Pennsylvania Avenue. So uh, getting closer and closer. Now, um, Joe, another thing I wanted to ask you about is obviously she looks absolutely stunning now. And she's going to be tonight, you said she. They're, they're announcing as he's getting closer. We can't quite see him, but. Um, she would have had several dresses custom designed for tonight, correct? She did. She's had about 15 different designers commissioned for a potential gown for this evening. But none of them know. No. no. Not even the winner knows what she's going to wear? No, absolutely not. I think it's always been her protocol to just really wear the dress she wants to wear, and people find out by watching. And you think that she definitely chooses an American designer for tonight? My bets are 100% on American designer tonight, absolutely. So what might some of the options be? Well, I know she's commissioned designers like Narciso Rodriguez, mm -hmm. Takoon, definitely Jason Wu, who designed her last inaugural gown, Tori Birch. You know, I think there's a real handful of indie, real new names that she wants to champion. And is she going to become even, I mean, she's already known as a stylish person and a style icon, but she's got a new look going right now. She does. It's a svelte, sleek, modern hip look. And the bangs. Let's yeah, not forget the bangs. The bangs. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what do you think? Bangs are often very difficult for women to pull off. They are, but I think Michelle pulls it off brilliantly. Right. I mean, she looks very modern in them. All right, I want to bring in Jim Acosta. Jim, we can just see you now. You're getting closer and closer. Um, and uh, are they getting back in now, or what do you see, Jim? They are. I, I think they're they're getting back in. I can just barely make out the president and the first lady from my vantage point because of the positioning of these trucks. But I believe he has gotten back inside his limo, uh, and, and you can also hear the the uh, effects of that because the cheers sort of went down along Pennsylvania Avenue. Obviously, the folks who are on this end of the parade route are going to be a little disappointed that the president uh, isn't walking the entire uh, route. But uh, but it was very exciting there, Aaron, for a good I would say half a mile of this uh, trip down Pennsylvania Avenue to see the president, the first lady, uh, walking on foot, greeting people on both sides. And one thing that we could make out, and you can sort of see it in these windows in this office building uh, just over my shoulder, just people with their noses pressed up against the glass waving to the president. And at one point, you could see the president sort of looking up at them and waving to them as well, clapping his hands, waving to people as he goes by, uh, trying to acknowledge almost an, you know, each and every person uh, who has lined up along this parade route to show his appreciation. Aaron? Yes, and obviously here, um, they're a little subdued. They're a little sad he just got back in. Of course, you may recall last time uh, in the first inauguration, he got out twice and walked each time for between six and eight minutes. So obviously there's the possibility that he could get out uh, one more time. Right behind me over my shoulder now, we are seeing uh, the, the beast, as it's called. 
uh, the presidential's, uh, the president's car uh, approach. You can see right in the shot behind me the police, but it's going to pull by in just a moment. Uh, you'll hear Brianna's voice because I want to give Brianna just a, you know, give a couple of the headlines. This car, it's called the Beast, is a pretty stunning machine. It is an amazing piece of machinery, and people, unfortunately, they aren't seeing the president in person right now, but they are looking at the president and the first lady through not only bulletproof glass, but this is an entirely bulletproof vehicle. It is actually reportedly sealed in case of a biochemical attack. This is a body made out of steel, aluminum, titanium, and a ceramic material. The tires are still functional if they are punctured. And security, of course, is a very real concern. This is why we only see the president once, maybe twice, uh, in, in this process. Remember, the first time that an armored presidential limousine was used was for the inauguration uh, in, in 1965. Very much uh, a concern uh, for, for, uh, for LBJ. And so this is uh, something that has continued, however. Uh, and yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen, the and president of the United States, Barack Obama, and the first lady, Michelle Obama. All right, and you just heard, obviously, the uh, the announcer's voice right next to where we are as the president is about to pass by. Jim Acosta is passing uh, where we are sitting right now. Jim, can you, hey there. Jim has the prime spot right on the back of the pickup truck. <laughs> That's right, Aaron, and I, and I have to hold on for dear life because uh, <laughs> even though I'm lucky enough to be on the back of this of truck, the there are some hazards to this uh, prime piece of real estate. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, and I saw you can see everyone, uh, all the press uh, vehicles. The president is about to pass where I am right now. I'm going to wave to the president, Brianna, and I will see. Led by Sergeant Salvador. We're on a platform that's about 10 or 15 feet elevated from where they are. I can see the president right now in the limo. He was just, it looked like, adjusting his coat. And they are literally passing where we are right now. Moving a little bit closer in the direction of Wolf Blitzer, of course, who is at the reviewing stand, which is where the president is headed. He's the first vehicle in this parade. Once he gets there, he will get out and watch the rest of the parade go by. As we said, there'll be 59 other groups. Ceremonies. Chairman, Senator Charles Schumer. Charles Schumer getting a lot of airtime today. Senator Lamar Alexander, Speaker of the House. Wolf, he is now formally en route to you from where we are. You are the uh, the next CNN stop on his route. Aaron, let me ask you this question. Now, you've got a special guest who knows a lot about fashion. Why do we spend so much time talking about the First Lady's dress, coat, fashion? such little time talking about the president of the United States <laughs> and the overcoat he's wearing. What can you tell us about that overcoat? Well, I will ask him, Wolf, but I will say I have an answer. She's more beautiful than he is and a better dresser. <laughs> but other than that... <laughs> uh, I know the poor men always get yeah. neglected, right? Yeah. Oh. But the president looks great. He had a very important tie choice to make today, which he it looked did. like she coordinated with her. He did. He was definitely coordinated. I mean, the entire family color coordinated. His blue tie was really the sort of, I have to say, the final detail to the entire Obama family and their color scheme. All right. Now, everybody gets a new outfit. I'm, I'm always wondering this. You know, I just got married, and my... My now husband got a new suit for the wedding. But, you know, we didn't have to, right? I mean, men can, you know, does he get a new suit for his inauguration or does he wear a suit he's already had? Do you know? I don't know. You know, I would hope he got a new suit today. It's a great day. It's a new suit. You can celebrate, you know. New year, new term. <laughs> and he did. He had a new suit for the last inauguration. I believe it was a, uh, a tailor out of Chicago who designed his, uh, his suit. So certainly uh, you would think he might have another one today, but we don't actually know. And the fact is he coordinated his tie to her dress, not the reverse, right? Absolutely. That is fast nice for sure. And she probably picked the tie too, I would expect, Wolf. I think it's I think it's I think it's, I, I, I think it's fair to say I think it's fair to say she looks great, he looks great. Uh, we were we're gonna continue our special coverage. We're now here in the Situation Room, we want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. We're continuing to watch the President of the United States, the President of the United States and the First Lady. They are now uh, getting closer and closer to where Kate Baldwin, Jeffrey Tubin, and I are. We're at the reviewing stand right across the uh, from the North Lawn of the White House. Christy Paul is not that far away. Christy, where are you? 
Well, I'm at Madison and uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, and this crowd has been waiting for this because you know the announcer, uh, Charlie Brotman, he is an institution here. I, I would like to say he is spitting enthusiasm. He doesn't have that broadcaster's voice that some people might think, but you can hear how excited he gets about this, and he's been doing it for years, and he keeps telling this crowd, he's been telling them for the last hour, we're getting ready, folks. He's almost here. He's on the way. In broadcasting, that's what we like to call a deep tease. So these folks have been ready and waiting for some time.